so the, the first thing I want to talk about is surgical masks. So uh, we've all uh, you've quickly stated numbers here. So these, I'm about to go through several uh, different slides to, to give you just scale and magnitude of federal resources that have been applied at, at the problem. So uh, 27.1 million surgical masks pushed out to state, um, state governments. Um, for N95 masks, 19.5 million N95 masks. Uh, and so if I was, if I was in a uh, local hospital that was running short, I would, I would look upward because uh, the federal government has pushed out uh, um, resources. So for protective gloves, 22.4 million, 22.4 million pairs of protective gloves. For face shields, 5.2 million face shields. For ventilators, we have pushed to the states more than 7,600 ventilators. And I think as I was coming over here, that number's changed slightly. I think it's now 7,640. Given to these states, to the predominant of these states, so we wanted you to have some numbers. Now, as we've indicated, we had ventilators in the national stockpile. We pushed ventilators out. We're holding uh, uh, ventilators to put to the point of need, but we're also um, buying ventilators, asking the industrial base who produces approximately, uh, prior to COVID, approximately 30,000 ventilators a year. We are going to, over the next several months, by the end of June, work to acquire 100,000. And so one of the, one of the tools that we're going to uh, I can anticipate needing, we've already executed, is all of those vendors that we're buying them from will need, potentially will need help in their supply chains with their suppliers. Um, to, we might rate orders. We might help them get ahead of others um, in that in endeavor. So I think Mr. Navarro is going to talk uh, a little bit more of that later. So let me talk about the air bridge. So it not normally takes approximately 37 days to get from overseas, get product, load it, get it to the United States, and distribute it. That's about 37 days. So to prime the pump, so to speak, we have lined on an air bridge to get product here faster, working with our major suppliers as they, have, as they work to fill orders to get more to health care workers now, we are working to align transportation to product. Now, one of the things we're also doing is the team that works for me are scouring the globe and finding pockets of personal protective equipment that might not otherwise be in the U.S. hospital supply chain. That is also going on these flights. Six completed. And a number scheduled. 28, 28 flights scheduled here in the near future. Uh, we're, we're working towards some days we'll have one flight, some days there might be two flights, multiple flights uh, over the next coming days. Um, these 28 are, as far as I can see, out uh, uh, a, a couple of weeks. Then again, matching product, two flights to create volume in the supply chain here faster than the 37 days. I'm just going to leave um, that up as I talk about uh, a few other items. So let's talk about uh, New York City and the public health uh, hospitals. I believe it's they're called New York City uh, Health and, uh, and uh, Hospitals. President directed, as I speak, there are um, pallets being formed, truck being loaded. I gave a uh, an address in New York City here uh, uh, an hour or two ago, and one of our distributors is uh, making that happen, and that delivery will happen tomorrow. On the data front, this is almost unprecedented. This is a commercial supply chain with 
six to seven major uh, distributors of health equipment. We brought them all in, and we said we we need to make informed decisions, and we are going to help make informed allocation decisions. So within a matter of days, feeding from their business systems, their enterprise resource-like systems, I brought on board a tool, a supply chain tower, that the DOD was using to manage a supply chain for a very complex weapon system. Their data goes into a data lake. We have a tool to be able to use their data and see it. I can tell what product is coming in, what their orders are, what they're filling, what they're not filling, and see the volume in the supply chain. And understand what they're doing down to the county level. We're working to get it potentially down to the hospital level. So this 200 and some odd uh, N95 respirators, we, we took a look in there in the in the supply chain. And we said we we can't we have the volume to go do that. I called the distributor and they're making they're making that happen. We anticipate as the hotspots around the country, we anticipate these vendors at our direction helping them allocate product to the right place at the right time. So if I talk finally about expanding the industrial base. So the vice president was at Walmart the other day who told him, I want to get in this game. How do I do that? So I got the call. Uh, we provided them specifications. And Walmart is going to have use their suppliers to cut fabric, make gowns, so product. But that's not always the case. We have lots of folks that want to help. I believe you will see in the coming days the use of the Defense Production Act in creative ways to help people that are not doing this today to do it. We have uh, essentially uh, leads. Uh, the number yesterday was 210. Uh, I believe it probably grew today that we are working with uh, to find how each one of those might need help to get in the game that's not in the game to increase the uh, throughput through the uh, through the healthcare market. Again, the president gave me one task: uh, get more to our healthcare workers now. Um, and I took that to heart because I have uh, not that I don't need that from the president to, to that direction to, to move out, but I uh, I have family in New York. My sister is a nurse practitioner in a Westchester hospital. And my niece is a nurse on a Long Island hospital. And I have other health care professionals in the family. So I have skin in this game. And uh, uh, the president asked me to get more to the health care workers. I'm going to get more to health care workers.